Greetings everyone, and welcome back to the Nakalukan channel. I uh, was going through my closet recently, and I found this old, uh, this old baddie bad shirt that I bought, like, I think when I was a teenager, so probably when I was like 18 years old and still in like my goth phase, so to speak. And I was like, this thing is fucking hideous, but I can't get rid of it, and uh, it seemed very appropriate to, you know, wear it in one of these uh, videos of mine. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, going forward, um, uh, quite a recently, a couple weeks ago, uh, Scott Candy from the uh, record label Chronic Mind, also the mastermind behind the project Grunt Splatter, he sent me a huge, and I mean huge, box of stuff here. Um, Chronic Mind isn't a particularly huge label, but it is a long running label, and he sent me like three fourths of their releases over the years, and, uh, he said I didn't necessarily have to review it all, but I feel like I probably should because, for one thing, I'm trying to get into more death industrial and power electronics music, and that's basically what he sent me. And also because, I mean, this you know, this is something he put his time and money behind, and obviously, you know, if he could uh, sell a few more of these discs all these years later, or even the newer ones he's put out, I'm sure he'd be uh, very pleased with that, and uh, I will do my part to make that happen. So, uh, out of those albums that he sent me, uh, one, of the, one that really stood out, a relatively new release from last year, is called uh, Underneath the Deadlight uh, and the album Angelic Void. Underneath the Deadlight is a project from Santiago Martinez, who is from Mexico. And sort of a starting point to this review is that um, over the years I have heard a lot of musical projects from Mexico. Black metal, death metal, grindcore. And none of them are good. I don't know if I just didn't hear the right band or what it was, but I have never heard a good music project from Mexico. I, I don't get it. And off the top of my head, I cannot think of any single like dark ambient or other you know, post-industrial you know, theme project from Mexico. If there is something obvious that I've overlooked, definitely tell me in the comments, but uh, I don't know. This album, though, is incredible. Um, this is basically a mixture of death industrial, power electronics, dark ambient, maybe a smidge of neoclassical, and then, I guess, even black metal. It is a very unique album. I have never heard anything like this. And the first thing that I really have to say about this album, if you have, you know, typically disliked death industrial music or any of that more abrasive of industrial sound is that this elm has an immensely dark and menacing atmosphere to it. I mean, I think atmosphere is the key, the key release with this, or the key word to use with this release, because it is just so just deep and suffocating and just evil sounding. I mean, this reminds me of like, um, basically like a lot of like occult black metal bands, you know, it just really, really just sucks you into this dead void of just negative energy in it. It is overwhelmingly great if you really want to like, um, you know, go down that rabbit hole of just evil energy. And I mean, wow, man. So, I mean, all of these sort of typical death industrial characteristics are there as well as something a little more abrasive with the power electronics. There's certainly a dark ambient undercurrent. And as I said, there is a smidge of like neoclassicalness with some piano bits and then there's a lot of, uh, you know, really distorted, raw, trebly sounding guitars, which, you know, remind me of, you know, raw black metal bands. The vocals themselves are just scathing, raw, evil shrieks. I mean, I can't really make out anything he's seen, but it's, it's very cool. I mean, it's a great hybrid release, I guess that'd be the best way to describe it. Is that you, get, you get a lot in this release, and uh, it's relentless, and it doesn't, like, let up at any point in this release. Well, maybe sort of when kind of the more dark ambient characteristics come about, but uh, this is fucking really good. I, I mean, truth be told, and you know, again, I am I've known about Death Industrial and Power Electronics for you know probably 20 years now, but I've just this is one of those things I never really explored. So it could be that there's something else out there that sounds like this, but I haven't heard it, so I have nothing really immediately to compare it to. I mean. You could compare it to a lot of the old CMI artists like MZ412 or, you know, stuff like that. Maybe a little bit like Atrex Morg or Nod or, you know, stuff like that. But it's just there's a lot more going on here and there's that atmosphere is so richly evil. Just, wow, man, like, it's just great. So 
Let's look at the front cover, which also is very, very cool. I mean, it's got a very much a black metal kind of aesthetic to it. There's a back cover there, very cool. Inside, uh, there you can see a picture of Santiago. The album credits and the tray card there. The CD, of course, is playing in the CD. Yeah, this is really, really cool stuff. I mean, I've never heard anything exactly like this. Santiago also has a couple side projects, or maybe there are earlier projects he did called Drexican, Reptilla, and Uth 3 if I'm saying it right. It looks like it was like a French word or a Latin word. I, I don't know. But uh, these ones seem to also explore a little more abrasive territory. Just a little bit I listened to them on uh, Bandcamp, but it, it's definitely something I gotta investigate more. He has also had a split with, or not, maybe it's a collaboration with I grunt splatter, I gotta I got take a closer look at it, but I, I definitely want to get everything this artist has put out, because this is really, really good. I mean, uh, um, over the years, you know, Chronic Mind as a label has existed since 1996, and I thought it was a more prolific label, like I thought Scott had been doing it, you know, all these years, and, but then it seems like, it, I think it was around 2002, the label went on hiatus for almost 20 years, and then 2021, it reactivated. Seems like he's been pretty consistent since then, and he's of course put out his own music and uh, several other discs, uh, many of which he sent me, and all of them are really, really good. Um, somewhere down the road there's going to be a little bit more of a, a grunt splatter special, I guess, so to speak, so something a little bit more elaborate to look forward to if you like grunt splatter's music or just want to learn more about grunt splatter. But anyway, if you have any interest in death industrial, power electronics, black metal, and dark ambient, and just want to hear this malicious hybrid creature, I mean, this is the album to get, man. I mean, uh, this this is one that can, I think, can really, you know, sort of get you into the genre, because there's so much substance here. It's such a such an incredible atmosphere, especially if you really uh, enjoy releases that can really just take your mind off to these really... Uh, you know, evil planes of existence and just this nightmarish realm. I mean, uh, the first time I listened to this, I was, mm, I was not exactly in a good mood. I was feeling very depressed, and it just, uh, I'm not exactly sure if it made things worse or better, but it definitely, uh, definitely took me on an interesting journey. And every time I listen to this album, it's, it's one of those albums where, like. Where I just want to like lay down and chill and just fully absorb the music, and that's something that I think my, uh, I myself don't do nearly enough. It's too much of a thing where like I have music in the car or at work, or I'll have music playing on my stereo like while I'm editing the video or doing other bullshit like that when I should just be really sitting down and absorbing the music. So this is one of those releases that's really forced me to do that and I love it. It's just, there's so much to take in here and every time I've listened to it, it feels like each subsequent real, uh, listening has kind of revealed new characteristics. Um, you know, and as far as like, you know, the noisier aspects are concerned, it's nothing that's overly abrasive or, or gonna, you know, pierce the ears or anything. It, it seems like it's fairly well distributed and it's really just, uh, just a really great release. So anyway, uh, Underneath the Deadlight, if you've not heard this, definitely look it up. If you have never heard uh, anything from Crying to Mind regularly before, well, I got quite a bit coming for you. So hope you enjoyed, hope you enjoyed this review. I'll see you next time. Underneath the Deadlight, Angelic Void.